Hey, Anna, how are you? Hi, Nir. I'm fine, thank you. And you, how are you doing? I'm, I'm great. I'm so happy that you're joining us. Uh, I, I've seen you on LinkedIn. That's how we met. Uh, I saw that you gave a lot of uh, speeches, a lot of engagement. I love it. You're sharing the knowledge. This is actually what we're, what we're trying to do in the FinTech Nation Summit, to include all the experts, all the knowledge from all over the world. Um, so this is the purpose of, of, of the summit. And uh, before we, we dive in into a lot of topics that you are expert in, I want to know about you. I want the audience to learn about you. So give us a little bit of a background. Yeah, so first of all, thank you, Nir, for your kind invitation. And I'm really happy to reconnect with FinTech Nations, but also with Israeli FinTech community. Uh, I have some friends there, and I know that some of them are also speakers at your event. So my special greetings um, come from Warsaw to, to Israel and to the FinTech community there, to the FinTech um, Association, Israeli FinTech Association as well. And about myself, as you mentioned, so. I'm, I'm just shifting towards uh, sharing knowledge because I've been 20 years in payments innovation, in financial services innovation, even before it was uh, called FinTech. So this interrelation or combination of financial services and technology was there. And for example, I introduced one of the first online payment gateways in the senior region, also mobile payment schemes and mobile payments, mobile banking. So just being 20 years in the industry, I've seen a lot of changes. Uh, the logic uh, seems to be the same. So we wanted to create innovation. We wanted to create like a, a invisible payments and of course just care about the customer experience. But definitely it shifted a lot in terms of the technology, which is now available for banks, but also for new entrants. And it changed a lot in terms of the approach, especially towards uh, customer. So now I'm just uh, having been uh, with corporations like Citibank or one of my recent roles includes uh, being a fintech leader uh, for PwC when I was driving the entire fintech agenda, but also working very closely with fintech startups and banks and incumbent companies. So being so many uh, years in the industry, now I'm shifting towards uh, knowledge sharing like naturally and I'm more advising, mentoring but also speaking and, and even lecturing. So we also launched like one of the first in the world open banking specialization, open banking and platforms in finance, together with Center for Finance um, Technology and Entrepreneurship in London. Wow, that's a lot of, a lot of things. Uh, we'll try to, to dive into uh, all, all the stuff because you're, you're at the for, forefront. You, you've been uh, an expert and, 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 and you know the, the who's and who's in the industry. So for us, you are a resource here in the summit, and we just want to ask you as many questions as we can. Um, and what do you see like around the world in terms of open banking? Let's start with that, and then we'll dive into payments and other stuff. Yeah, sure. So open banking is a very important trend all around the globe, and this, this is a global trend. So this is not only happening in Europe uh, that was really driven by PSD2, so by the regulatory framework, but there are uh, markets all around the world, just to mention Singapore, when this is more industry driven, but also followed by the Monetary Authority Singapore, so MAS there with some playbooks on open banking and some recommendations how it can be uh, implemented and done. Um, and uh, of course, with Australia, that was very much in the forefront of building this market driven approach and also now in Latin America, for example. So we have Brazil, we have Mexico coming into this open banking play. But when we had the focus on Europe, this is what's happening. And th this is a quite a recent um, uh, phenomenon. Of course, just the idea of open APIs, it's, uh, it was there in the market, but just being driven or being in a way enforced by regulatory framing by PSD2, this is something that happened like last year. So definitely in terms of compliance, that there's a new regulation that banks should follow and they should open up the APIs to, to the new entrants, to new players in this game. So sometimes called as TPPs, of course, it if we stick to the regulatory framework, so third party providers. And we've seen a lot of um, this happening in Europe, but I would say that now we are more at the level of compliance. So banks have to open up the APIs. They have to make the data accessible for new entrants. And this is just the beginning of the entire journey. This is not 
what, uh, in my opinion, but not only in my humble opinion, this is not what open banking is about. Because open, bank is, open banking is about opening up the entire ecosystem and definitely including or absorbing new uh, sectors, new verticals, and also new players. So we have like different stakeholders in the ecosystem, not only banks, but definitely we have new entrants like fintech startups, like tech startups, but also techn technology enablers. We have merchants, we have uh, even public sector, so uh, government, and also in terms of verticals, we have different verticals to be covered, not only banking. So having said that, we go beyond the open banking concept, building on the open finance and even open data ecosystem. So we open up data. And of course, we are not there yet. So this is a kind of concept, an idea, vision, which is very uh, much attractive and a uh, really powerful vision. And I'm really a strong believer and advocate for that. But we are still in Europe at the compliance level for many cases. And just to, to make, for example, APIs stable and reliable, just to, 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 to deal with this technology level. But of course, there are some powerful use cases that are already going beyond account aggregation and beyond payment initiation. These are like the this key two key functions within open banking. But definitely we have something in the wealth management, we have something in the credit management, digital onboarding. So we have a lot of different use cases. And having said that, we also have a lot of examples of how banks can cooperate with, uh, with new players, with incumbents, even big banks like ING, they partnered with MENA Technologies, they also, uh, this is one of the recent uh, corporations, but they also uh, like come up with their own solution on the personal finance management with the old, this is a spin-off of the um, of the ventures, internal ventures, and now it's a separate company, very successful one in the PFM. Uh, in France, in Spain, in the UK as well. So I can talk really just, yeah, I can I tell you with it. a I lot of examples, I can talk long uh, about open banking, but this is just a, a kind of a sneak peek of what's going on here um, in Europe, but having in mind that it's a global phenomenon. So you said it right, it's just really the start, the beginning of the beginning, uh, the surface. Um, what do you see in terms of, of new ways of payments? We, of course, we have COVID and a lot of buzz around that because, you know, it's COVID. We are at home or we are uh, contactless or what, what do you see in terms of uh, innovative payments abilities? Yeah, so first of all, needless to say, so we keep repeating that, that uh, we are in process of digital transformation, but COVID definitely, COVID-19 uh, is a catalyst for that. And some people say that's like, uh, it's, it's the best business sponsor for a change in a way. So we were first to do that. Uh, so needless to say, and we keep repeating that COVID is a catalyst. So what we see in payments, and of course, this is also related to open banking, can be related to open banking. Because uh, when we talk about open banking and PSD2, there is also uh, just the new perspective of payments is being unlocked. Because apart from uh, very well-known card-based payments or even wallet-based payments, we have account-to-account or so bank account-based payments. And this is being used by the big players, uh, acquires PSPs, but also merchants, Adi and KLM, so they're the airlines, but also uh, other players. And uh, one of the recent is Visa partnering with VIPs, so the, the mobile payments scheme in, uh, in the Nordics. And there are also a lot of examples from the payment schemes, MasterCard and Visa coming into this uh, area. So uh, Visa in process of acquiring Plate, but also MasterCard uh, have been partnering with Vocaling for a longer period of time. So that's, that's one of the directions. And of course, this can be really valid for the e-commerce, definitely, because what we see is the shift in the e-commerce, uh, because of course, uh, because of the social distancing. Uh, so a lot of commerce is being done in the online um, ecosystem, in the online environment right now. So we have the shift um, uh, to, to the e-commerce and the consumers are using that. Of course, we have a lot of changes in terms of the categories because um, generally speaking, the retail consumption is being, uh, uh, so it's decreasing, but definitely there is a shift towards online commerce. And then the digital payments are, 
a vital but also very important part of this e-commerce, including digital payments. And if we talk about the physical in-store environment, of course, we, we all as consumers, we see a lot of changes because this is about social distancing, but this is also about the hygienic and safe way of uh, interacting and also shopping and uh, making payments, all this interrelated. So definitely, first of all, it's a shift towards cashless payments. So we are uh, less and less cash oriented in many different uh, geographies, including even cash heavy geographies like uh, Germany, Italy or uh, Central Europe. Uh, so this is the first trend. And then the second one, so this is the contactless and exactly we, we need like touch free um, interaction. So this is towards uh, either a contactless card payments or any other wallet based uh, payment that can be executed at the POS at, uh, or in, in store. Also in app payments. Yeah. So we, we've seen uh, this trend as well. And I think it will be uh, also enhanced, but uh, uh, value added services. So VAS that will be interrelated with payments, instant payments, for example, instant crediting, but also some of the other interactions that can be done digitally or contactless in a way, uh, in a safe environment. Amazing. And uh, what's the role of the AI in, in all of this? Oh, that's another a powerful uh, story and uh, a very red hot topic in the industry. Of course, generally speaking, AI is a very, very broad uh, field and definitely there are some subfields. Uh, for example, conversational AI that I'm a big fan again. Yeah, that's why <laughs> and I Probably many people know that. Uh, and I'm just speaking about conversational AI. I also have the experience of introducing some of the uh, voice birds and also textbooks, chatbots in the banking organizations with fintech startups, with tech startups, with AI solutions providers. Uh, so, and uh, I also just, I'm co-author of the AI book as well, when I was exactly writing about the, convers the rise of the conversational AI platforms. So even we can talk about the platforms. And of course, this is a broader idea of conversational AI that can be introduced and applied to banking and finance, especially to payments as well. But definitely uh, it's, it's broader because it's a multi-sector and can be applied to any sector, retail, um, uh, but also some utilities, airlines, and of course every interaction can be done with use of the voice. Because voice, uh, of course, uh, just to separate like two things, uh, to structure them, them well, AI, as I said, is a broad um, field about um, automating processes, but also making analysis, including predictive analysis, and of course, building the knowledge base. But conversational AI is this subfield of AI when you uh, can recognize the voice, you can recognize the speech, but definitely uh, when it's AI powered, you just the, the, the bots, the algorithm can understand the natural language. Yeah. So the language we human uh, interact and we communicate. Uh, so this is, this is a, a very important thing to understand. So as they can understand the way we communicate, not to go into some details right now. So of course they can conduct the conversations and they can lead the interactions with uh, humans and with consumers just replacing, replacing the human agent. And it can be done in text, it can be done uh, using voice. So there are chatbots for the text-based solutions. They are also voice bots for voice powered solutions. And of course it automates a lot of processes. It can generate uh, a lot of savings for banks and it can reduce the wait times because bots can just lead simultaneous uh, sessions. So people can interact using the uh, messaging platforms. That's why we also call this platform like very, very known one and very popular in the world, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, but also Telegram and also WeChat, dependent on the geographies. Uh, this is the, the, the messaging, the text part. But there are also some very important um, um, solutions and also uh, examples of the applications in the in the voice uh, field. So definitely voice parts that can lead the conversation and voice. If we if we again see the COVID-19 perspective and post-pandemic perspective, this is a new interface because it's digital, it's uh, touch-free, it's hands-free because you can talk to the device, you can talk to the uh, either uh, mobile, smartphone, you can talk to the, and the smartphone device 
at home, yeah. uh, like smart speakers, Amazon, Alexa, Echo, and uh, some other Google assistants. You can use everything you want. And definitely, so, and sometimes it's even eye free because you don't need the eye contact. So it's really a very easy and friendly for many users way of communicating. So we, we call it a new interface. And this new interface, especially in the social distancing situation, so we can just communicate instead of talking to a to, to person like we are talking right now, so definitely you can use the, uh, the machine-based machine interface for that. So this is a powerful way to go. And probably uh, one of the, uh, that's why we call it also voice economy, because it can just have a powerful impact on how people interact, how they communicate, but also generate a lot of savings due to the AI application. I wanted to say that uh, I was testing it with the Amazon uh, PayPal uh, integration. And uh, yeah, you just uh, ask it to send the money to a friend or check your balance or all kinds of dispute that you have with PayPal. It's still limited, but yeah, it's definitely there. You said it right. I mean, it's, uh, it's exciting. Um, and um, all, all these uh, challenger banks, neo banks that we have also in the summit, we have niche banks, the banks for the freelancers, the banks for the SMEs, like, what do you see in, in that space? And also, uh, you know, we can talk about Singapore, we can talk about Hong Kong, we have a WeLab uh, here in the summit and others. Uh, where do you see uh, nice examples of, of innovations or innovative things around the world? Yeah, so just commenting on what you said about uh, PayPal and uh, Alexa, Amazon Alexa. Definitely. So this is the, the starting point. So we are just using the uh, voice powered interfaces, but this is again, the beginning, almost similarly as with open banking. So first there's a kind of vision standing behind it and we should support this vision because it can bring a lot of uh, benefits to all the stakeholders in the ecosystems, including banks, but also new entrants and again, consumers. So if we talk, if we take the perspective of the new interface, uh, but definitely there's a long way to go still because we reached uh, like a very good accuracy in terms of the voice recognition, in terms of the natural language recognition or understanding. But there is still a lot to be, to be done. And I'm, I'm just uh, writing about that from time to time. I can also um, disclose and share with the audience perhaps, although this is something that is not launched yet, but will be released at the beginning of October because I'm also curating the conversational AI course. So definitely, uh, I just uh, I'm, I'm talking about all these applications of uh, conversation AI, voice and chatbots in my course, and there is a lot of uh, really powerful examples all over the world. So if you ask me about the innovation, so definitely in terms of payments, in terms of digital payments, and also in terms of conversation AI, we can look at the Asian giants and not only banks that are like HSBC or DBS. Uh, so DBS partner with some of the um, solutions providers, not like one, of course. So it's Casisto, it's Active.ai. So there are like uh, different AI solutions provider involved in the um, conversational AI journey. So they have the text bots, they also have voice bots. Uh, but there are also other banks. Standard Charter is very active. We're just uh, playing around with different fintech providers, different fintech startups. They have the ventures as well. And they provided a lot of solutions in terms of conversation AI, but also payments. Uh, so we can look at these companies, but we, we can't ignore and we do not ignore that big tech uh, from coming from, from Asia, especially from China. I mentioned WeChat, uh, definitely there is also, they are just giants in terms of payments and payments related solutions. They are also just in the forefront of conversation AI. So they have their own um, conversation AI platforms like Xiaowei. This is coming from uh, WeChat and Tencent. And there's also, of course, Alibaba and Alipay and, and Financial as entire holding. And uh, what, in terms of payments, for example, what Alibaba is doing, they partner with uh, Xiaomi, so another giant who is producing a lot of the devices, smartphones, starting from smartphones to smart devices, home devices, but also even electric scooters. And they come up with a new generation of the POS terminal for digital payments and it's open system, it's Android based, and it's as 
in terms of open banking, you can just plug and play a lot of applications. So this is a similar solution for in-store, but it's also connected to, to mobile pause. It's also connected to cash register or digital register. So we can look at Asia, but definitely in, in Europe, we have a lot of um, um, very innovative companies. So definitely new banks, we know Stalling Bank that, that is already a kind of incumbent, uh, but they were very successful in implementing open banking concept and they are still just using the open APIs, partnering with different um, stakeholders. They have the marketplace, but also the Nordics. If we look at the Nordics, uh, the, there's a kind of specialty there in terms of the open banking. A lot of providers, not only AISPs, so account initiation service providers, so for account aggregation, but also payment initiation and also companies providing like tech enablers, uh, providing their bank as a platform or bank as a service solution. So I can mention Infuse, I can mention Tink, I can mention uh, Klarna, of course, Klarna is out yeah. of any, <laughs> uh, just beyond competition. And uh, they recently raised another uh, huge, uh, like mega round. Uh, so they are the, the most valuable FinTech in Europe coming from or based in Stockholm. And I can't, uh, I can't, uh, so there are like really just powerful examples. I can't um, ignore, uh, definitely I have to mention Israel as a hub for FinTech and especially in the AI field, in the cybersecurity field. So there is a lot of payments companies and payment startups from, from, uh, from Israel that I'm aware of as well. So there's, there are like certain hubs um, in, and of course in the UK, I mentioned Sterling Bank. There is also another example of Zelf. This is a very recent uh, new bank. Uh, they launched in June. Yes, in June, I guess. And then what they are doing, they, they don't have a bank app or banking app, although we know that the, this is an app uh, payments or any other services that can be done uh, from the app level. So they launched a bot. They launched a chatbot and they integrated with uh, six messaging platforms and they will be also uh, covering for, uh, for um, other. So they will have like 10 uh, main messaging platforms and then they will come up with a voice bot. So the, the, you can basically bank with them, you can execute payments, but there is no banking app, but there is a bot for that. So uh, I think there, there are also lots of interesting solutions all around the world. <laughs> Amazing. This is, this is the FinTech Nation Summit. That's what, exactly what we're trying to do. I mean, we try to have as many as we can. It's a marathon. It's 48 hours, one after one after one after one. A lot of them uh, you already uh, know, and this is, their, this is our way of learning from each other and, and seeing what's up there and up there. And this is why your talk is so important. I should have, you know, we should have like, do like a uh, like an hour of, of just mentioning and mentioning and mentioning because you're like a, a database a very good one uh, oh thank you okay. uh, just fortunately i'm not a bot <laughs> i'm a, a real person live person but uh yeah you mentioned a lot of companies and i think the nordic api gateway is also one of your uh, uh guest speakers i'm just runemide uh, the ceo for nordic api gateways they, they definitely they, they are also in this open banking um stream and of course uh in this um in this trend and visa and, that you mentioned also in the nordics yeah. that are working with them and lunar from, from the nordic oh, yeah, sure sure and a lot of other and companies and this is, this is, uh, we have a uh, team teammate which is uh the new uh they have the new uh fintech arm teammate fintech which is just announced and uh Wow, and, and we can talk about other markets. I mean, we have uh, the Emirates, you know, the, the, the yeah. UAE uh, with right now, they also have actually peace with Israel. And the first delegations who are flying are the fintechs, the banks. These are yeah, the first. You, you touched a very, yeah, very good point. Also, Middle East is very active. And of course, I can talk about that as well because I, I was speaking at some of the events. And I know I also was um very close to one of the implementations in the robo advisory and wealth management and of course one of the leading banks in um in the middle east uh is just implementing this solution uh this is again ai powered with a new algorithm for a uh, advisory and there's a lot of going on because there is a fintech hub there and also qatar is uh establishing a, a new fintech hub and all, even saudi arabia so there is a lot of uh countries in the middle east involved 
And this is great what you are saying, and you, you managed to gather a, like you know a lot of different stakeholders, a lot of different companies, innovative ones, and uh, I, I like this fintech nations expression because I said it's like fintech nations coming together because really just uh, uh, people and uh, like individual but also companies from from different parts of the world, mostly Europe, but definitely it's not limited to. To Europe, so I'm, I'm really happy to be part of this event, and thank you yeah, once again for you. your invitation. And just uh, yeah, and I'm really happy also to, to contribute in terms of my expertise that I can share and knowledge, <laughs> which are, we can just exhaust the topic. But yeah. I invite you to also stay also after, and and we have people here who are watching you, and the and there are fintechs from all over the world who wants to connect with you. Uh, and, and learn and, and collaborate and how can they find you more information about you where's the best channel to reach you yeah so the best channel is LinkedIn and um, definitely if you can look up at my uh, LinkedIn profile you will find more details more information you can connect um, uh, to, to me also uh, on LinkedIn so yeah, yeah. and so I'm quite I'm open of course you know probably I can't uh, accommodate all of these requests, uh, especially in a very short period of time. So uh, sometimes the, there can be a delay in the response, but definitely I'm open to connect because I'm working with fintech startups and I also building cooperation or collaborations with others with incumbents. So I'm very happy to hear from, from new from new entrants. And I'm, I'm, I'm really just having words for both incumbents, but also fintech uh, startups and players. I'm, I'm really happy to support uh, new entrants and to see innovation being brought by them. So once again, thank you very much. Toda Rabba, all the best to you in Israel as well. Thank you, thank you. And uh, I can't wait to collaborate with you even more and uh, initiate and yeah, we have so much to do, you know, in this in this field and you, you mentioned the AI and, and possibilities. I mean, it's a whole summit by itself, of course. Um, and uh, yeah, I can't wait to uh, collaborate even more personally and i can tell it to everybody here i'm very honest very direct like israeli this is my one of my favorite talks uh, in the summit because <laughs> to find somebody who who can share who loves to share and loves these examples just like i do and loves to test all these features like like we do uh it's for me a, a privilege so i love it and uh, thank you very much and uh we'll catch up soon yeah, thank you, Nir. Once again, very, I'm really pleased to, to hear your kind words and it's much appreciated, but I'm happy to share my knowledge. And thank you so much. Thank Good you. luck. Bye. Bye.